Hi, everyone, and welcome to Privacy Beat, where we bring you all of the latest news that you need to be aware of in the privacy world. We let you know of the latest exploits. We let you know of some different tools that you can use to bring more privacy to your digital life. And of course, we call this segment, Get Off My Digital Lawn. All right, so let's dive into today's topic. We are talking about a new report that was put out by Mozilla. And uh, just a reminder that throughout the segment, you are going to see some quiz questions come up at the bottom of the screen. Make sure that you put those uh, responses into the chat. I'm already chatting with some people there, JR, uh, Otaku, Gen X. Uh, you guys make sure that you're looking at the quiz questions and participating there. And then whoever gets all the right answers wins eternal glory on the show. And that's always fun as well. So let's dive into this new privacy guide, right? So Mozilla, they have this page on, uh, on their website the Mozilla Foundation, and they call it Privacy Not Included. It's basically a list of products, uh, all kinds of products that you have that connected to the internet in one form or another. They go through to a whole bunch of research for you so that you don't have to, and they tell you what you need to know regarding privacy, regarding security, regarding AI, all of these different things. We're going to dive into the details of some uh, recent products that they just added to this list. But in general, this is a really great resource. There are lots of great resources resources like this on the internet uh, that you guys should be keeping an eye on, really helps you make informed choices as consumers as to what digital things you want to allow into your life. Zach is saying eternal glory. Excellent, Zach. I, I can't wait for you to be answering those quiz questions. So the biggest news that come out is that they have added 32 new apps related to mental health, meditation, and prayer to this pace. Uh, the, the results are not good, basically, to put it lightly. They're not good. Uh, they added the privacy not included label to 28 of the apps. Whoa! So we're going to dive into some examples of the apps that they added to the list, uh, what kind of stuff Mozilla was not happy about. Um, now, just to kind of give you an idea of what this guide is, a bit more information about it. So Privacy Not Included is a buyer's guide. They say this on their website. It's a buyer's guide aiming to provide consumers and companies with concrete information on certain products, services, and apps. Uh, they're judging it by certain criteria. So for example, what does the company do with the data that they collect? How can a user control their own data? The company's previous track record with user data protection and how the company meets uh, Mozilla's minimum security standards. So they're talking about like how secure the passwords have to be. What's the encryption uh, standards that they're using, things like that. So um, they're basically concerned about the amount of data that these 32 apps or 28 of them uh, are collecting. They're concerned about how this information is being used. They're worried about lax security practices. And they're worried that a lot of these apps are sharing information with advertising partners or they're combing the data from external sources. So they're looking at all kinds of other stuff that are uh, information that's available you, about you on the internet. They're creating a profile, beefing it up with this external stuff, adding it to the data they're, collection, uh, they're collecting. It's pretty intense, um, so, some of this stuff. We'll dive into specific details. Now, it's interesting because there was a report that was put out and it was this quote from someone named Alyssa Davis, who's an assistant professor at Columbia. And she said that, you know, some individuals may avoid accessing care, like mental health care for a professional, because they fear that others might find out that they're seeing a therapist. And so they might go to one of these online apps. And meanwhile, these apps are just sharing that data with everyone. So I think that like we need to be cognizant when we're using digital tools in our lives. What kind of information has been putting out there? It's not quite as tangible as going to another person and people finding out you're seeing another person. It's it's this kind of in in intangible ephemeral world of digital data leakage, but it is really just as concrete as a physical person finding out because physical people are on the receiving end of this data as well. So just important stuff to be aware of. Also the concerning nature of like the concerning thing about these apps collecting your data is that it's such sensitive information as well. If these are mental health apps, things like that, it's worth being cognizant of what the apps are actually doing. 
Now, um, on Mozilla's privacy policy page, they explain that, you know, we have just a bit more time and expertise to read the privacy policies and delve into the company's security practices. So I'll say that right off the bat. What Mozilla is doing, they're not taking the products, they're not testing them in a lab, they're not sniffing data packages, seeing what's being spread there. They're actually going by the company's own uh, professed data policies. So, I mean, Mozilla is doing their best to scrutinize these, but a lot of the cases, these are going to be like self-reported things anyway. But even then, in self-reporting this stuff, these companies don't do too well. Um, basically, Mozilla, they say that they look for information that they can find that's publicly available to consumers before they purchase a product. They try to understand the privacy and security concerns you should be aware of. Um, they also call out the best products. So they reach out to companies for probe with further smart questions and uh, and list all the answers that are provided. And the companies that do well, they also have a best of selection on their website. So you can check out those policies uh, uh, sections there for companies that they think are doing pretty well. Obviously, right at the top there, you can see Threema, you can see Signal on there. These are things that actually um, Mozilla thinks is pretty pretty good. They also have a creeper meter. It's pretty fun if you guys wanted to go in, read the, the research that they've added, and you can vote as well. You can say, like, does this information creep you out or does it not creep you out and uh, and share your opinion because Mozilla might look at this information they present it to you they might come to a different uh, conclusion and users who are re reading their research might be like actually this isn't very creepy at all this is fine so you can see you can kind of contrast that to Mozilla's findings and see how the creeper media rates things so um, and I do want to clarify, so the security practices that they're talking about, they're looking at like minimum standards that Mozilla thinks companies should be meeting. It's great to have a company kind of holding other companies accountable in this stuff, right? They're looking at uh, which standards they're using for encryption, the automatic security updates, uh, how they are rolled out, whether strong passwords are required, um, whether having a system um, in place, whether they have a system in place to manage vulnerabilities, uh, having an accessible privacy policy policy, all of these things. And so it's a pretty comprehensive report. I'm going to dive into some specific examples that they've given up. So let's start with uh, Better Stop Suicide. Whew, that is a meaty name for an app. Suicide, you know, it's, a, it's an incredibly, um, oh gosh, complicated, complex, um, weighty topic, right? So you would want this app to have pretty good privacy practices in place, uh, security practices, all of that. Ah, let's read exactly what they say here. Mozilla's in their report says, better stop suicide's privacy policy is bad. Like get a failing grade from your high school English teacher bad. Take the second sentence in the privacy policy. It says, contact us at if you want any questions or problems uh, regarding the use of your personal data, we will gladly assist you. Yeah, they just plain all omitted the way to contact them. We did find a contact email at the very bottom of their privacy policy and emailed them multiple times with questions about the app's privacy and security and received no response. Whew, so that is their finding. There is like, they, they literally don't give you a way to contact them in the, the sentence where it says contact us at, they just left it out. So that's pretty terrible, especially for a suicide prevention app. Um, they also said that the developers of this app, it's called the Better App Company, they've been inactive on social media since June 2021. So that's not a great sign as well. So this company is not active. It's not regularly looking at feedback um, and all of this stuff. So a big red flag from Mozilla. I want to uh, dive to another example. There's um, Better Help is another one. There's Talk Space is another one. Let's look at uh, Better Help. So both of these apparently they concern Mozilla because they collect a large amount of personal information uh, in order to be able to link users to a therapist. That's an interesting point. So some of these apps actually do connect you with therapists uh, in real life, and in order to do so, they have to collect a large amount of data. Now uh, Mozilla says that Better Help directs users to an intake questionnaire before they're able to see any sort of privacy notice. This is kind of dodgy, right? So uh, before even seeing the privacy notice, users of this app have to fill in a whole bunch of 
really personal information. Where's this data going? Like, is it being shared with third parties, with Google, with others? The point is that consumers are unable to even find out this information, right, uh, before actually diving into the app. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty problematic. Um, I want to actually take you to the page, show you the information that you can get, teach you how to digest this information from Mozilla. Let's open Calm because Calm is a very common meditation app. Uh, let me pull that up here. So if you look at the Calm page, it does have the warning, warning privacy not included. I think that's such a, that's such a fun little, little tagline they've got there. I actually love the way they presented this because when you buy a product, when you download an app or whatever, make a purchase, um, you, generally there are little disclaimers that say battery is not included or this cord is not included. It's important to know whether or not privacy is included as well. It's just as important part of the product and service that we're purchasing. And I love that Mozilla has actually taken the time to put a comprehensive database together about this. So Calm, it says here, all right, da, 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 da. the Calm uses your data to personalize your online experience and the advertisements you see on other platforms based on your preferences, interests and, interests and browsing behaviors. So they kind of explain all of this. They also say, well, Calm says they don't sell your personal information, but that's always such a dodgy way to phrase it, right? It's like saying, yeah, Google doesn't sell your information, but Google's literally an advertising company, right? So you've got to dig into, like read between the lines on this. What um, calm uh, uh, does say is that they can use your data and they can use things like your actions, preferences, interests. So you could use machine learning, browsing behavior to target you with ads and personalizations and the like. They also say they may obtain information about you from publicly available sources, marketing and advertising partners, consumer research platforms, and all business contact databases. So like, what does I don't sell your information, I don't sell your data even mean in this context? If they're literally being paid by advertisers to link you and your data with said people you know like it's it's just really dodgy how they phrase this there's actually a great article i can't remember the author offhand about how google does these practices because i've gotten some pushback from some of the community who's like naomi google says on their their privacy page that they don't sell data it's like they, they literally data is literally their their business model so like to sell data you know it, it, it's a specific phrase but let's actually dive into the details of what that could entail um so let's Diet, you know, scroll down a little bit more. It says on here, it's got in a big box tips to protect yourself. And they give two tips do not use your Facebook account to log in and choose a strong password, right? So I think that is really great that they kind of condense this information and give it to you and uh, and then give you like takeaways when you're using an app like this. And a lot of them are similar for these products. Go down further, then it says like, how creepy do you think this is? And uh, and you can vote on there. Um, and then it's got three tabs, privacy, security, and AI. If you go to the privacy uh, tab, it's very simply laid out, you know, can it snoop, snoop on me? Like, does the camera, do, do you need permission to use a camera? No. Microphone? No. Does it track location? No. Um, what can be used to sign up? Can you use an email, a third party account? It kind of gives you all of this detail here. If you click on security, it also talks about encryption. Uh, I, I wish that when they say encryption, Mozilla's just written yes. Encryption could mean a whole bunch of different things and there are a whole bunch of different standards there. So I wish they'd given us more information, like is this encrypted at rest is you know can employees see this information is it end-to-end -end encrypted that you know maybe you, there are private messages within the app uh can the calm app read those messages like we don't have that information i wish they'd added it but it's still helpful to read this and then ai that was that's an interesting section maybe we'll be seeing more of this as ai becomes more prevalent um uh, is this AI untrustworthy? Uh, can't determine. Uh, it, it's interesting to start to see people flesh out sections and AI because it's just become, going to become a more pervasive part of our tech lives. Then the bottom section, they've got news um, where they've basically curated a bunch of articles about this app that you can dive into for more details. But I just think this is really well laid out. I think that they've given a lot of great information here, but I like with the grain of salt. So let's go to another one. I want to take you to Hello, which is another app um, out of the 32 that they explore on the site. So on Hello, 
the, I just want to read this. So it made it gave me pause when I read this. I was like, oh, like how are they actually determining privacy practices? Why are they giving some companies a thumbs up, some a thumbs down? And they write here that um, they got investment from Peter Thiel. And then they start to go into details about like Peter Thiel's political leanings, saying like, uh, you know, he left Meta to become more involved in politics. He supported candidates who aligned with Donald Trump's agenda. And like part of me is like, why is that relevant to privacy? Because I mean, I know that Mozilla has a political axe to grind, but I want to know about privacy, right? That's what this whole thing is about. So it did give me pause and I was like, you know, I, I just don't see a difference in the left and the right when it comes to privacy. Um, I see good people on both sides, but overwhelmingly I see really bad people on both sides who are all about total surveillance and everything. So I just don't see how that actually helps give us information about whether this app is good for privacy or not. But then it gets better. So I, I read through this. It's actually, um, Hello did actually pretty well. Um, and and I was like, well, why would they get a thumbs down? Is it the Trump thing? Um, they actually answered all of the questions that Mozilla had really quickly. They were one of the few um, uh, companies that did. But here's why they gave them a thumbs down. I think this is really interesting. They said our biggest concern with Hello is that they allow the use of relatively weak password. We were able to log in with the password 111111. Hello told us that they will be updating their password requirements to require a strong password this coming quarter, and we will update our review when we've confirmed that this has been updated, which should then remove our privacy not included warning label. I think this is tremendously helpful information for users because sometimes users don't actually know when they're they have bad security practices or bad privacy practices themselves. And Mozilla is actually telling people here, like, hey, this is not a great app because it's allowing the users to do really um, uh, insecure practices and they're weakening themselves in this way. So I actually really like that Mozilla has put this together and they've included all of this information. Um, dive into it, everyone. I want to know your thoughts on this. Again, it's not just mental health apps. This is just what a lot of articles this week focused on because they've just added a bunch of them to the website. But if you take a look, you know, the smart home, you can look at all the devices there. If you're looking to get a, a camera doorbell or whatever, you can click on their products there and then find out like actually some of them are way better than others. You've got a lot here that actually have um, uh, you know, really great scores. And then if you just toggle the privacy not included box at the very top, it will filter them and show you which ones are just the bad ones. And so obviously at the top there, you've got Amazon Ring. Obviously, you've got Amazon Echo. You've got Amazon Show. You've got Amazon Ring again. Uh, you've got uh, Ecovax Dbot, Facebook Portal. Um, so it just gives you a lot of great information about how secure, how private your, your things are. Now, I wanted to actually go back to Gizmodo, who wrote an article about all of this, because I, I myself have a little bit of an axe to grind about this article that they put out. So their whole takeaway, and it's great that they um, wrote about this and were like, yay, you know, Mozilla is looking at all of this stuff. Um, and then their takeaway from this article is, since mental health apps aren't regulated, it could be difficult for individuals to know what apps have protections to ensure that their personal data remains secure. And it just, I just read something like this and I just want to like hit my head against a brick wall because it's such a dumb take. And I feel like for a few weeks now, we've been you know, sharing a lot of dumb Gizmodo takes. There are a lot of them. Um, what's so dumb about this? All right. First of all, this sentence says, because mental health apps aren't regulated. This is not true, right? So it, it's, they're not regulated by governments. Let's say that. Let's be specific with our words. So mental health apps are not regulated by governments. This is a really important distinction because Mozilla is actually providing a consumer guide and they're using the reputation system to regulate these processes. And I actually think that these work much better than government regulations. And why I'll give you a little bit of a, a side note why I feel very strongly about that is because sometimes when the government puts a stamp of approval on something, it's even worse because 
the stamp of approval is usually put there because a company met some arbitrary requirements that are probably not even relevant anymore. It's just an arbitrary stamp at the end of the day. And uh, people think like, oh, we've got the government stamp of approval, then I can trust it. And that's so overwhelmingly not the case. And people shouldn't be relying on this, right? Sometimes it makes people trust things more because it's got this government stamp of approval. I think we'd be better off without any government stamps of approval. So people are kind of forced to do more market research and then we'll rely on, you know, great research from uh, that which the, like that which the Mozilla Foundation put out, right? So. Uh, the other thing, part of this is is why we shouldn't rely on this government stance of, of approval. Like if you look at like SEC, for example, on our crypto show, we talk a lot about how they really come down and hard on crypto. Um, SEC stamp of approval in that world basically means that you're an entrenched, uh, you have entrenched interests, you are an existing financial institution, and they're basically the only institutions that the SEC is giving that rubber stamp of approval to, right? But it goes, it gets even worse than that in the privacy space, because actually, a lot of these government bureaus, a lot of these government agencies are some of the worst privacy offenders of all. So I am not going to trust a government agency to put a stamp of approval on a product about whether or not it's good, has good privacy practices. They're, they're literally siphoning all of our information and collecting it in giant NSA databases. And that's the organization I'm going to go to, to determine which privacy protecting products I should use. I mean, it's absolutely, it, it made me laugh when I read this from Gizmodo. I, I can understand the sentiment, but it's so far off base, it kind of made me giggle. Um, now, they also have this sentence here, until they are regulated appropriately, these apps need to be treated as nothing more than a crutch. So just as we summarize here, I want to reiterate, like we have a, a list like this from Mozilla, where you can yourself go through, do your own research, find out the privacy practices. Let's not forget that these apps are awesome tools. So they're providing alternatives for people who might not be able to maybe afford traditional mental health services. Maybe there's so much bureaucracy involved. Maybe they need certain IDs that they just don't have access to. Maybe it's incredibly expensive to use these other things. And so you know we've innovated and a lot of these companies are coming out with alternatives which is super super great to have these alternatives so i really don't want an article like gizmodo's article to dissuade people from diving into these apps by them saying like well they're not regulated you shouldn't really use them they're nothing more than a crutch i think they're really valuable tools and honestly i think people should be this discerning with any product that they use they should be looking at the privacy practices and the security practices of anything they do that that touches the internet for example um and i don't think that this should detract from what these apps accomplish i think these apps um a lot of them are just really helpful for people um but we just need to couch them in reality and say like they're helpful let's actually look at the pros and cons let's find the best ones of the lot when it comes to privacy security all of that stuff so it's great that people have alternatives they don't have to by necessity you know become entrenched in this terrible bureaucratic um world they can instead you know try out these things in the comfort of their own homes so go ahead use them just make sure you're aware of what your app is actually doing when you use any product that's sort of the takeaway here um we've got uh <laughs> we've got uh, <laughs> a super chat here i'm just reading uh reading the comments here we've got a member uh ungato has joined the chat and become an nbtv fan uh huge thank you ungato um i want to kind of summarize here by giving a quote from the mozilla foundation's website they say I think this is a great quote. We as consumers need to demand that privacy and security as a value, uh, need to demand that privacy and security as a value from the people who build our products. That's how we'll start to make the internet and our lives a bit safer in this digital world. That's our goal every day here at Mozilla. And I really appreciate that sentiment. We do as consumers have to demand these things because if not, if there's no demand, no one's going to build them into their products. So it's great that you guys are watching, you're interested in privacy and security and all of that. Uh, keep seeking out the products that do protect your privacy and your security. This gives the market signal that this is what you want and demand from these services. And hopefully it starts a revolution of privacy and digital financial sovereignty because that would be super. So let's go into the quiz questions. I want to summarize these quickly. Uh, the first quiz question we gave was, what is a good way to check a real email versus a phishing email. Uh, C, contact the sender on a different medium and verify that they sent it. 
because real people can uh, have terrible spelling and grammar too, and real people can poorly replicate logos. So it's not always a good uh, signaling device, but if you are concerned, just don't click on the link, just verify uh, elsewhere that that person actually sent it. Um, then uh, you make a purchase and the cashier asks for your phone number, what do you do? I would say politely decline, but this is gonna be up to your individual preference. I say this um, as the option, if you want to preserve privacy. Just remember every time you hand over your phone number in a store, they are collecting that in some sort of database. You don't know who they're sharing that with. Generally, it's a whole bunch of third parties. And so I would just be very aware of not sharing that with anyone. Um, I also, I'm gonna be coming out with a video about VoIP numbers, about how you sh actually should not give your actual cell number out to anyone. and should only be giving out VoIP numbers because SIM swaps are so prevalent. So we'll, I'll, we'll go into that in a future video. Um, final question, you get an email threatening to expose your internet activity if you don't pay a ransom what do you do a do not click the link reply or send any funds it is a common scam uh, c also made me giggle uh, confess your secrets to your family it's cheaper than paying a ransom also a really good answer but no just like don't indulge these things um, it's a really common scam that is sent out and i would recommend that everyone has a backup of their system at all times in case you get hit by some sort of encryption bug that like freezes your hard drive. If someone's demanding a ransom, you can just say, no, not going to. I'm just going to um, uh, back up from my, my backup that I have. So, oh, we also got a super chat in the chat. Uh, so I will read that out. Nate, the programmer, Naomi, how cool would it be to see the percentages of how people answered? Is that possible? Wait, the percentages of how people answered where? Is that on the Mozilla thing or in our quiz question? Um, let me know and I'll work on that for you. But thank you so much for your support. And Sam, I'm gonna invite you onto the show. Who is our winner today who gets Eternal Crypt uh, Privacy Beat Glory? Eternal Privacy Beat Glory will go to YouTube viewer Zach Duncan. Zach Duncan, congratulations. Woo! Eternal Privacy Beat Glory. Tell me some fun facts, uh, Sam, about Well, Zach. unfortunately, the algorithms don't seem to be working today, Naomi, and uh, Zach didn't get back to me in the chat with the fun facts. So no, the fun I, facts I, I could, not I meant could make to be some fun up. facts, Sam. I, Sam. I could make some up if you'd okay, like. Okay, everyone close your ears. I just have to speak to Sam, my producer, in secret. Sam, we always make up the answers. They're never real. Oh boy! All right. Are, are you serious? Back, you mean you've been you've been, me, you've been having me you've been having me mislead our viewers this whole time, and they're not no. fun. No, well, we would never do that. They absolutely <laughs> not. Sad. Absolutely not. But Zach, all right. We know you well, then yes, yes. First fun fact: you. Zach Duncan is a massive Stevie Nicks fan. A massive Stevie Nicks. Massive fan. Stevie oh, Nicks fan cannot start the day without coffee and four Stevie Nicks songs. We've got two more. He just responded. He said he loves algorithms and he loves chewing food. I think they're great facts. Like chewing that. food, that is an important skill and it's good to love what you're good at. Mm -hmm. So congratulations, Absolutely. Zach Duncan. Congratulations, you Zach. Eternal private CP glory. Oh, and thanks for yeah, cluing me in on the, on, the, on all that, by the way. I appreciate that. <laughs> Well, everyone, thank you for tuning in. This has been an awesome show. Love having you guys here. Uh, if you ca didn't catch the note last week, we are changing the format of the Crypto Beat show. That's not going to be every Friday uh, now. It's actually going to be a once a month format where we do an AMA. So if you're new to the crypto world and you have a bunch of embarrassing questions that you're too afraid to ask, that is a great place uh, to ask them. So if you have questions for that show, respond in the comments section and we will put those together for our first uh, AMA for the Crypto Beat show. But thank you for tuning in. We love you guys. So great to have you here. And we will catch you next Thursday, 4 p.m. for our regular Privacy Beat show. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend.